Analyzing climate disclosures, John Kostiak is the founder of Kostiak Strategies. Uh, he founded that his company uh, three years ago as a way to help NGOs and foundations with the with some expertise and assistance uh, developing their climate change and clean energy policy programs. Today on RealTransparentDisclosure.com. So, John, welcome. Thanks so much for doing this. I know how busy you are and, and things are getting crazy. I'm about to blog on ESG Professionals Network site about the potential change, a tipping point um, with the ocean's currents and what that might mean for global weather patterns. So we're getting there to the point where I think, you know, we've already noticed a lot of changes in climate, but I think we're about to enter into a new phase. So what is your background? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm an attorney by training. Uh, I spent an early part of my career working for a federal judge and then a big law firm. And then for most of my career, I've been uh, working in the NGO sector, uh, spent uh, 20 years in the National Wildlife Federation doing nature conservation and endangered species and the like. But during that time, I really uh, became aware of the dramatic impacts climate change was already having on our natural world. And so... Uh, next jobs after that was running a renewable energy industry uh, uh, nonprofit and then a whistleblower nonprofit. And then uh, my most recent uh, uh, stage of my career is uh, where I'm at right now, running my own consulting firm and helping uh, NGOs and foundations deal with uh, climate related financial risk and opportunities. Which is a very controversial topic for some reason these days, but it, it is. So how do you feel or what is the best approach to getting companies to improve what their climate disclosures look like? It sounds like we might have the SEC's final rule yeah. here in the next few weeks, but even then I'm sure the deadline for the rule, the effective date will be pretty far out or at least far out in terms of it won't be this year. It'll probably be next year at the earliest. Um, so we still have this year to, to, to worry about in terms of companies at least getting to a, a minimum standard that's hopefully above what what's we have now. Well, I have some good news. Obviously, there's a lot of very worrisome news about the physical state of our planet <laughs> uh, needs you know urgent attention. But the good news I can bring is that investors are becoming increasingly attuned to these problems. And investors have enormous power. Uh, we are in the process of a you know trillion dollar reallocation of capital out of dirty toward clean, and many investors want in, and uh, for is to get more investors to participate and to accelerate that transition, uh, disclosure, meaningful disclosures, standardized disclosures, reliable disclosures, are are a big part of it. Um, and I look at this disclosure world as uh, capturing two concepts. One is what you call microeconomic, individual companies. If you want to decide whether one company is doing better than another and participating in this uh, energy and this uh, transition of our economy successfully, a resilient company, one that understands the fundamentals of energy transition, you ought to have the information that enables you to make that judgment to support that company. And there are many investors that are crying out for the information. So that's the micro part of it. Then there's the systemic part of it, the macroeconomic part, which I think is equally, if not more important. And those are the, what they call the undiversifiable risks, right? It's like there are some uh, asset managers that are projecting, you know, 25% reduction of GDP around the world if we don't deal with this problem. And that is uh, also an investor concern, but it's uh, investors need to recognize that policy matters. Uh, and they can hold companies accountable for their policy positions on climate-related matters. Uh, and there's other things we can do at the uh, systemic level as well, bank regulation and uh, regulation of uh, capital requirements and the like. So um, that's the two orientations of my work. And I think we really can move the needle on climate change uh, with those two approaches. And what are signs that a company's climate disclosures might not be up to snuff. They might not be telling the entire story that's happening behind the behind the disclosure. 
Well, you know, we're moving in this world from a voluntary disclosure regime to a mandatory one. And what you see in that process is a number of companies that have made big climate commitments in response to their customers, their employees, their investors, policymakers. And a lot of them are net zero, uh, essentially consistent with the Paris Climate Accords, albeit net zero by uh, mid-century. And uh, the problem is most of those pledges lack the homework behind them. Uh, and so uh, the strong word people oftentimes use is greenwashing. Uh, even if it's not a full uh, board deception, it certainly is um, failure to do the necessary homework. So the key thing I think we're going to be getting from this next round of disclosure, which will have greater rigor because the government is involved and there's higher levels of scrutiny now and accountability, is what is your path uh, toward your uh, climate target, your emissions reduction target? You have a meaningful transition plan. And so that's the big question I think all of us are going to be asking because we've had a lot of controversies about the shortcut, cheap solutions, uh, and all these scandals around the carbon offsets market and the like. And the real question is, is can we get a conversation going about what is a meaningful investment in the transition to a uh, decarbonized economy? Which companies are the leaders? Which are the laggards? So it sounds like you read a lot of different climate disclosures from various companies. What are signs that a particular company's climate disclosure might be more credible than, than other companies? Well, one is there are a number of organizations that are collaborative approaches to this that are, are setting standards, even on the voluntary side, even before you get to the mandatory side. And so when you uh, you can find on the Internet a number of critiques of companies' disclosures in relationship to the GHG protocol and the what used to be called the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures now is part of the ISSB uh, framework, uh, the Science-Based Target Initiative. So each of those has a, uh, a, a set of standards you can evaluate companies' performance against. And now, as some of these regulations are coming in place, we're going to have a new way of evaluating performance. Uh, but, you know, there are some core concepts, uh, you know, are you accounting for your uh, all of your greenhouse gases emissions, including uh, scope three, which are your your value chain, your supply chain and your customers? Um, are you uh, um, are you being uh, candid about your expenditures? Are you uh, noting where your transition investments expenditures are in your uh, audited financials? Those are the big questions we'll be uh, have been asking. Thanks, John. And maybe we'll tune back in with you after the SEC adopts their final rules and we see what the SEC is going to mandate. And that's going to perhaps dramatically change uh, disclosures going forward, but maybe they won't. We will have to see what the final rule actually says. I will very much look forward to that conversation. We'll be digging in when that rule comes out. It looks like we might be seeing it next week. Thanks. Hey, Rock. Take care.